More than 5 million emails from the private intelligence corporation Stratfor will be released to the public in the latest document dump from WikiLeaks. The leaked emails span from 2004 to 2011 and paint a picture of a new breed of corporation, one which relies on inside informants and paid sources and sells the information it gathers to its military, government, and corporate clients. Some of the communications from the Texas based company, which WikiLeaks calls a private spy and a shadow CIA, reveal its role in monitoring activists from Canada to India. FSRN's Alice Olstein reports. WikiLeaks began publishing what they're calling the Global Intelligence, or GI files, early Monday morning. The data comes from more than 5 million emails from the corporation Stratfor, which does intelligence gathering and analysis for powerful private and government groups, ranging from Dow Chemical to the U.S. Marine Corps. The International Hacker Collective Anonymous has taken credit for obtaining the documents, and more than 25 media organizations around the world are partnering with WikiLeaks to distribute them. At a press conference in London on Monday, WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange explained what the emails reveal about Stratfor and similar corporations. Over the last 10 years, the private intelligence industry has boomed in the United States and in other countries. But with its growth, there has not been a commensurate growth in accountability mechanisms that should be investigating and controlling these organizations, like the controls that are placed. Uh, on government intelligence organizations and military intelligence organizations. Assange pointed to specific emails that highlight the revolving door between government and private sector intelligence work, Stratford's use of bribes and insider sources, and the group's advice on international money laundering. Assange also drew attention to emails revealing that corporations pay Stratford to monitor activist groups, including People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, or PETA. Stratford. Was hired by the Coca Cola Corporation to monitor and assess PETA activists in relation to the 2009 Vancouver Olympics. The questions from Coca Cola were what is the number of PETA supporters in Canada? How many of these are inclined towards activism? The links between PETA in Canada and PETA in the US or elsewhere? PETA's methodology for planning and executing activism. And the risk of non PETA hangers on. In one of the leaked emails, Stratford Vice President Fred Burton offered to share the FBI's classified file on PETA. Burton used to head the diplomatic security service at the U.S. State Department. PETA released a statement Monday saying they can't imagine Coke drinkers will celebrate the company secretly conspiring to stop PETA protests about the killing of baby seals. They also said the revelation contradicts Coca Cola's people friendly image. Other leaked documents reveal that Dow Chemical paid Stratford to monitor activists in India who continue to protest the 1984 Union Carbide plant disaster in Bhopal, as well as the international groups who support them. One assumes that one is being monitored when one is doing things that threaten large corporations or, 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 or trying to threaten them. That's Andy Bickelbaum, a member of the satirist activist group The Yes Men. On the 20th anniversary of the Bhopal disaster, he successfully posed as a Dow Chemical executive in a live television interview. So I, I went on BBC December 4th,、uh, 2004, and announced to the world that、um, we, Dow Chemical, were taking full responsibility for the Bhopal catastrophe and compensating the survivors, as well as cleaning up the site, etc., etc., etc. Since that prank, the Yes Men have remained involved in drawing attention to the survivors of the massive gas leak, which killed thousands and continues to harm the health and environment of Bhopal today. The leaked Stratford email chain titled Yes Men Monitoring shows that the company collected and analyzed all the press releases, media mentions, and Twitter posts from the Yes Men. In their periodic reports to Dow Chemical, they focused most on the group's efforts to use Bhopal to spark a larger discussion on corporate impunity. That is what they are freaking out about. They were, they were really concerned about us taking this limited issue, Bhopal, and spinning it into a really big global systemic issue about corporations and the overall picture in which they can just do whatever they want. Stratford released a statement Monday calling the email hack deplorable and illegal, and refusing to validate any of the published information. 
The statement also says, quote, like all private emails, they were written casually, with no expectation anyone other than the sender and the recipient would ever see them. They should be read as such. Some of the more casual emails refer to members of Hezbollah as Hezies and call the subversive alliance for the liberation of the earth animals and humans Mexico hippie bombers. Thousands more hacked emails will be released in the coming days. Alice Olstein, FSRN, Washington.